So there's a new bill in California that's going to be restricting our firearms rights even further than they already are. Um, this is Assembly Bill 3058. And today I'm going to talk about it because there's a lot of uh, misconceptions or confusion around this. And I kind of wanted to just break it down real quick in plain English so that you can understand what it's actually entailing. Because I've seen a lot of things potentially taken out of context. This bill does suck. I'm not going to say that it doesn't. However, I think people are a little confused or might have a little bit of misconceptions about it. Real quick, I just want to say that I will be shooting at the Richmond Rod and Gun Club on Saturday, the 7th of March. So if you're there, come say hello. I'll be at the action range just doing some uh, shooting practice. Um, so if you're there, come say hello. Love to see you. So I kind of want to describe this bill as I was first introduced to it. And then I'm going to describe the actual bill text and what it actually is. Because I saw a post on Reddit. It said, permanent vehicle gun safe requirement. AB 3058, and at first you might think that at any time when you're transporting your gun or any time you're going to be having a gun in your vehicle that you have to have it in a permanent gun safe, and that's not really true. I'm going to read real quick for you. Existing law requires a person when leaving a handgun in an unattended vehicle to lock the handgun in a vehicle's trunk, lock the handgun in a locked container and place the container out of view, or lock the handgun in a locked container that is permanently affixed to the vehicle's interior and not in plain view or to lock the handgun in a locked toolbox or utility box. This bill would make these requirements applicable to all firearms and additionally require the firearm to be secured to the vehicle using a cable or chain and lock, or in a locked container that is secured using a cable or chain and lock that is permanently affixed to the vehicle as specified. First of all, this is not in relation to just transporting your gun to the range. You can still, like my video that I described earlier, transport your gun directly to and from a range, a gun shop, your buddy's house and whatnot in the same ways that I've described before. This is specifically talking about when you leave any firearm unattended in a vehicle, because currently it just affects handguns and the requirements are a little bit less stringent. Now, the requirements are for any firearm of any kind. This includes stripped receivers. This includes anything that is not a fully functioning firearm. If it is legally a gun or a firearm, this now applies to it. So let's actually read the bill text and I'll kind of try to go through this briefly. So basically what it's saying is, except as otherwise provided, a person shall, when leaving a firearm in an unattended vehicle, secure the firearm as follows. So it's saying not when you're transporting, when you have your gun in your vehicle and you leave that vehicle unattended, basically meaning you're no longer in the direct vicinity where you could stop someone from gaining access to your vehicle, you have to secure the firearm as follows. And now let me read that for you. By locking the firearm in the tr vehicle's trunk and securing the firearm to the vehicle using a cable or chain and lock. So basically this means you get your gun unloaded, you get your gun, you put it in your trunk, you then attach a cable lock through the gun or attach to the gun somehow and physically attach that to the actual inside of the trunk. If you don't have a trunk, this is obviously not something you can do. Two, by locking the firearm in a lock container that is affixed to the vehicle by a cable or chain and lock in the trunk elsewhere in the vehicle's interior that is not in plain view. So let's talk about that option real quick. So what that would mean is you take your container, you put your gun in the container, you then physically lock this device or container. So the gun is now locked inside this case. And then you get some sort of other cable lock or lock or chain lock and physically secure this case to your car. Kind of shitty, not the easiest way to do. It has to be outside, you know, hidden from plain view. Three, by locking the firearm in a lock container that is permanently affixed to the trunk or elsewhere in the vehicle that is not in plain view. So similar thing, now let's imagine that this container itself is actually physically, the bottom side is physically permanently attached to the underside of your vehicle or the underside of your seat of your vehicle or in the back of your vehicle where it's not in plain sight. I then close it up, lock this container, and then I'm good now that this container is physically permanently attached to the vehicle. The fourth option, by locking the firearm in a locked toolbox or utility box that is not a fit or that is affixed to the vehicle. Basically meaning um, if you have a truck, the back of your truck, you have one of those toolboxes you that is physically attached to the car. You then open that up, put it in there, lock that container up. It's now physically attached to that. There is a cutout for police officers. However, I'm not going to go into that because that is something that I I'm not going to tell you how to do. Your department should be the one dictating policy and strategy around that. So if you're a police officer and you're worried about this, 
talk to your police departments. Please also talk to your police unions and get this to not get passed because this would suck for all of us. Now, there's a couple definitions that we got to talk about. Lock container basically means a secure, fully enclosed or padlock or chain locked or cable locked device or combo lock that keeps you from accessing it at all. It does not include the glove compartment or utility compartment of a motor vehicle. Your locked toolbox or utility box means a fully enclosed container that is permanently affixed to the bed of a pickup truck or vehicle that does not contain a trunk and that is locked by a padlock, key lock, combo lock, or other similar device. There's another definition for lock. Lock means a locking device with a shackle portion that is at least 5 30 seconds inch of a diameter. Like tiny luggage locks that might not be adequate because it's not going to have the proper collar thickness to it. Uh, trunk means the fully enclosed and locked main storage or luggage compartment of a vehicle that is not accessible from the passenger compartment. A trunk does not include the rear of a hatchback, station wagon, or sport utility vehicle, or any compartment which has a window or toolbox or utility box attached to it by the bed of a pickup truck. Basically meaning hatchback doesn't count. Um, anything that isn't accessible to you does not count as your trunk. So now let's talk about what it actually means to leave unattended. So it says, for purposes of this section, a vehicle is unattended when a person who is lawfully carrying or transporting a firearm in a vehicle is not within close enough proximity to the vehicle to reasonably prevent unauthorized access to the vehicle or its contents. So for purposes of this section, plain view includes any area of the vehicle that is visible by peering through the window of the vehicle, including windows that are tinted with or without illumination. So if they can shine a flashlight or if they don't have to shine a flashlight, if they can see through it, if it's in plain view, regardless of whether your windows are tinted, this does not count as part of your plain view hidden out of sight. And so basically what this law is, the difficulties that might arise from this is gonna be most people that either don't have their own vehicle, don't actually drive if you're using public transportation, um, people like that or people that have big ass guns, like if you have a gun that's about five, 50 inches long, like some of those precision rifles, this is gonna be incredibly difficult. You're not gonna be able to stop on the way to or from the range to actually go get something. Because if you leave your car to fill up your gas tank and you have to go inside, are you really in the direct vicinity? This law really brings up a lot of questions and a lot of issues that I think many people need to be aware of. And I really hope this law does not pass. Please talk to your local representatives if you can, share this with your friends. We need more people to be aware of this because this is an issue that I don't think many people know about yet. So I'm just trying to bring some light to that by sharing it with you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. I'm gonna leave a link to the actual bill text so you can read it for yourself. So I just kind of wanted you all to be informed because I've seen some misinformation about this. This law does suck. However, I do want everyone to be on the same page so we're spreading the proper information because if we're gonna demand that our politicians and the people that are anti-gunners have their facts right, we need to have our facts right as well. So if this helped you, share it with a friend, share it on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, whatever it is. I hope this helped you. I hope you have a good day. Peace.